Thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Lara Schilling. I'm the teacher programs coordinator here at LACMA. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I am a fair-skinned white woman with curly blonde hair. And today I'm wearing a very colorful tie-dye t-shirt that makes me smile. Um, I'm so happy to welcome you back to Evenings for Educators, Art, Resilience, and Healing, which is a four-part virtual series taking place this month and which consists of an interactive lecture that took place on Tuesday. I'm sure quite a few of you were there and, and three hands-on art making workshops. If you would like to access captions throughout the program, please click live transcript on the toolbar at the bottom of your screen and then click show subtitle. Um, my colleague Susie Castillo is providing tech support today. So if you have any issues accessing the captions or you have any other tech related questions, uh, please send her a private message. Um, and I'd like to invite Susie to come on video and say hello really quick. Hello everyone, I'm Susie. I hey, you know it's hard to see me. There's a bright light right behind me, but I'm Susie Castillo. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a fair skinned Latina woman with short dark hair and glasses. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to message me. Uh, it's easier for me to see if you send it to me directly. Um, so when you're typing in the chat, send it to, to a private message, please. Thank you. Thanks so much, Susie. We're always super happy to have you here behind the scenes helping us with everything. Um, so getting back to this first program of the school year, um, I think many of you are familiar that we put on these Evenings for Educators programs every October, December, February, and April. Um, and for this first program, we wanted to revisit something that we looked at last October, which was social emotional learning. And we just found that this was a topic that was just as important and crucial now as it was then. Um, and we wanna make sure that we're providing you with resources to support your students creatively right now um, and support their well-being. And with that being said, I'd like us to take some advice from Sydney Snyder, um, the art teacher who gave Tuesday's lecture um, and take a moment just to focus you know, on our own well-being. Um, so if you'd like to close your eyes for this, you can. It's up to you, but we're just gonna take in a deep breath for two to three seconds and really allow the air to expand your bellies. Like make sure this is like a really deep, deep in your body breath. So breathe in and then slowly for another two to three seconds, breathe out through your nose, just feeling all of the air leaving your body. And we're gonna do it just one more time, breathing in, filling our bellies and breathing out. And this is going to help our nervous system settle down and move us into a comfortable space that will make it a lot easier for us to be open and curious and creative in today's workshop. Um, so just getting us, you know, kind of settled and ready in a good place. Um, for those of you who are participating for LAUSD salary point credit or professional development hours today, just make sure you fill out the survey that's gonna go out in the chat at the end of the program. Um, there's a portion at the bottom where you can put your contact info. Um, that's how we keep track of your attendance. If you have any questions about any of the different credit options, feel free to send me a direct message in the chat and I'll be happy to talk to you. And I'm gonna share a land acknowledgement um, from my current residence on occupied Tonga land in South Los Angeles. LACMA respectfully acknowledges that the lands on which our museum is built and the region that we serve is the ancestral and unceded territories of the Gabrielino Tongva, Gabrielino Keat, Fernandeño Tataviam, and Venturino Chumash peoples. Los Angeles County has been and is home to many indigenous peoples. So Susie is now going to share a document in the chat that contains all kinds of great information and resources for you. Open it up and you will find a link to sign up for our mailing list. You'll find a promo code for you and a guest to visit the museum for free. You'll find links to all of our upcoming programs um, and links to our curricular resources, which we create for each and every one of these programs and which include lesson plans, high resolution artwork images and ideas for classroom discussion. And I just wanna make sure that you are all aware that this program extends into next week with two additional workshops next Tuesday and Thursday inspired by the theme of resilience. And those registration links are in that same document that Susie is sharing in the chat. I also wanna talk about something really exciting, um, which is that the Obama portraits are coming to LA um, all the way from DC. 
They are going to be on view at LACMA from November 7th to January 2nd, alongside an exhibition called Black American Portraits, which is drawn largely from our permanent collection and chronicles the ways in which Black Americans have used portraiture to envision themselves in their own eyes. Um, that exhibition is up until April, so you have a lot of time to see it, but the Obama portraits will be truly here and gone before we know it. So we wanna make sure you take part in a free open house that we're gonna be hosting for teachers and select partner schools on Tuesday, December 7th. We, this isn't a public event, we're not going to be putting up any information about it on our website. So if you want to attend, you really have to make sure you sign up for our mailing list. Um, and that's how you'll get the communication and the opportunity to register for tickets. So that's on Tuesday, December 7th. We would really, really love to see you there. This is a special night dedicated to LA's teachers and students. Um, so, you know, don't sleep on it. <laughs> it's going to be really special. Um, we're also planning some great programs for you around the Obama Portraits and Black American Portraits exhibitions. The first is a special workshop um, led by educators from the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C., and this is specifically on the Obama Portraits, and that's on, on the next slide, actually. We can click over to that one. Um, and in this workshop, you'll learn how to interpret the portraits and make connections um, to your curriculum. Capacity is limited, so sign up sooner rather than later. Um, we also have an educator speaker series program on November 10th. We'll be looking at um, an artwork by Ada Pinkston that talks about and kind of memorializes the legacy of historic Angelino Biddy Mason, who was a Black woman who arrived in California as an enslaved person in 1851, won her freedom, and became an important community leader in 19th century Los Angeles. And then finally, if we go to the next slide, I know this is like a whole whirlwind tour of all the fall programs. Um, we're gonna be closing out our suite of programs on these landmark exhibitions with the December Evenings for Educators program. Um, we'll be taking a close look at these two shows with a lecture by Dr. Liz Andrews and two hands-on workshops with Blackman Teaching Artists. Um, if you come to the December 7th open house event, you can also get Evenings for Educators credit for attending. We'd love to see you at all these programs. Um, so be sure to register online, make use of all of the great resources. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to send me a message. I would now like to introduce today's teaching artist, Peggy Hasegawa. Peggy Hasegawa is a paper lover and paper maker. She teaches bookmaking using a variety of materials, including Japanese handmade papers, fabric and recycled items. Ms. Hasegawa is inspired by art from many different cultures and shares that love with her students. An arts educator for over 25 years, Ms. Hasegawa teaches classes and workshops in schools, at LACMA, and at other cultural institutions. Welcome, Peggy. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. I am an Amer Asian American woman. I have gray hair, and I'm so glad to be with you tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about love in all its aspects and how it can help our students, how it can help us through these difficult times. Uh, let's first take a look at the supply list so that we're kind of ready to go. And if you're somebody who just joined this afternoon and you just heard about it, you're fine. All you need for right now is paper and pencil. In about 10 minutes, we'll start on the art project, but I've got a few things to share with you first. So take a look at the list. And then, hey everyone, let's go on to the next slide. We're going to be talking about the warm-up activity. It could be questions that might help you talk with your students to get them talking. And it's also for us to get us talking and thinking. So these are questions uh, and I'm going to ask you to pick maybe one or two that you want to answer that uh, you would love to say something about and put it in the chat for us. So, you know, love, what does love mean to you? How does it make you feel? What color is love? And what would a face of love look like? And I thought of these questions and I'm, I'm excited to hear about uh, different questions you may have uh, while we're doing art. What other questions would you have for your students? But we can talk about that during art time or during discussion time. But 
talking about love, talking about colors. Some of the kids will respond to colors. So I'd love to see what your, the answers are you're, you're putting in the chat. We'll spend about a minute on this and then we'll, we'll go on to the next part of this. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. Great answers, great answers. Kindness, acceptance, brightness. <laughs> love is every color. Beautiful, really beautiful. And we can talk more about it when we come back from the breakout room because we will be going to breakout rooms later. Okay, then everybody, then if we go on to the next part, leading up to this fantastic photo, uh, the artist's name is Laura Aguilar and she was a local artist. She was born in Long Beach. She got her inspiration and interest in photography when her brother had a, a photography assignment from school. And to him, it was just the assignment, but for her, she was hooked. She was mostly self-taught, although she took some classes at East LA College. Uh, she took all kinds of photos out in nature, uh, self-portraits, uh, portraits of her friends and everyone. So let's take a look at the photo that's our kind of our star for tonight. Take a close look. Take a close look. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and answer in the chat. And Laura is going to field, field some of the answers. But is this photo a picture of love? You think about all the answers that you gave, all the answers your students are going to give. Do you think this is a photo of love, a picture of love? Beautiful, beautiful, great. And then uh, some of you have gone to the next half of the question, which is great. The uh, other half of the question is, what makes you say that? What makes you say that? This is a picture of love. Ooh, connection. And I'm sorry, Laura, I'm able to see this on a, a nice big field over here. I, I had asked you if you could field these for me, but this white background is perfect. Oh, oh my goodness. The touch, the connection, the embrace. Beautiful, comfortable. Warmth, really, really, really nice. How great. I love it because we're talking about this. So it'll open up the discussion that you could have with your students. It's so great, this sharing, because we get all kinds of good ideas from each other. So nice, so nice. And then some of you have answered another part of this question, and it is, how would you describe the figure's postures? How about their posture? Mm, nice. Familiar? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Safe. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Leaning in. How oh, nice. Oh, relax. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. there, there are as many answers as there are people who are looking at the photo. Just so nice. And if I could share one thing, you know, I looked at this and looked at this and then I noticed his arms, his arms like are around, one arm is around her shoulder, like protecting. And I was telling Laura, the look on their faces, it's not like, I'm in love, I'm in love. It's like, I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm protected. Really nice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, before we do the art, talk about the artwork, I wanted to read you something. Um, I did not know Laura Aguilar's artwork, so I had to look her up and just learn so much. 
This is an article that was in Art News, April 24, 2020. And the author was Maximilian Duron. And he wrote, with her images focused on her identities as a large bodied working class queer Chicana woman, she considered pressing subjects like mental health and equity, equity in the art world that, that are only today being given their due. She was so upfront with these issues in her work with her body and her identity that people just couldn't deal with it. She was uh, working in the 80s, the 80s and 90s. She died in 2018. And she was always struggling for recognition as an artist and the opportunity to work. So it would, just what a, what a woman. So let's talk about the artwork. Uh, we've talked and the students will have talked about what love is to them. I like it because it has broadened the whole subject for them because they're children, well, we're talking about K through 12, but even the older kids, maybe sometimes to them, love is getting things like, you know, my parents or my grandparents love me because they got me this, but all the words that you've used, all the ways that we could talk to the students and have them understand that it's, it's these incredible intangible things that maybe they don't think too hard about until we bring it up. So. We're going to be doing artwork. We're asking the students, we're asking you tonight, what do you think love looks like? Uh, how did the photo make you feel? What do you want to draw? For a lot of the kids from K through three, four, five even, think about the shapes that you're going to be using to make your artwork. Some of the kids will want to do a portrait of somebody. That's great, that's fine. If you discuss it with the kids, sometimes it's uh, a place they were taken to the park, to the beach, to the mountains, in the snow, because they recognize that somebody did that for them because they loved them. Sometimes it's somebody who has made you your favorite food. Maybe your mom or your dad or your grandma, grandpa uh, have made something really special that they know that you love. So it could be anything, it could be anything. So I think I'm gonna ask you maybe for 30 seconds because I want you to have enough time to do a good head start on your artwork. You'll have only about 20 minutes. The workshop is, the whole workshop is an hour. So you may not finish, which is okay. You'll have a good grasp of what you want to do. That's fine. But maybe for 30 seconds, if you can think about it off the top of your head, what comes to mind that you would draw? What would your artwork be? What do you think? And you can put it in the chat if you're thinking about it. Or if you need more time to think, you'll be doing that while you're doing art. Okay. I'm gonna walk over to the, uh, the studio camera and then let me give you the, the rough idea of what we've got here, okay? Uh, and when you talk to your, to your kids, the paper could be horizontal, landscape. It could be vertical, portrait. It could be any way. But I wanted to give you kind of a heads up that this is one idea of how to use your artwork if you like the idea. When you have your artwork finished, and if you have a manila folder or even just a big piece of construction paper folded in half, what you could do is put your artwork on one half, on one half of the folder or paper, if that's your artwork, and on the other half, if you had a photo that you wanted to add to it, that you could put that there too. And the reason I'm mentioning it now is that if you're thinking, 
I know the photo I want here and I want my artwork to kind of relate to the photo or not. So anyway, that's, that's the thinking there. But I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear how you're going to use this, any of your thoughts. So why don't you go ahead and get your paper and pencil and start your sketching and drawing. And then if there's time, then you can go to colored pencils, crayons, whatever you've got. If you have any thoughts while you're doing this or any questions, love to hear it. I guess I should watch the chat too. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. I'll have to go back to Asbrook Lundy, the shamanic fan, making a fit ceremony. I'll have to look that up. Nice ideas. So what I'm thinking, I'd love to hear any ideas that you've got. Uh, what I'm thinking is that my dad would take us almost every Sunday on a trip around the Palos Verdes Peninsula. We're lucky because it was there because we really couldn't afford to do anything else. Just hop in the car, go around the peninsula. Just so beautiful. So I think I'll do kind of like a, a kind of like a little landscape. Oh, feather fans, thank you. Yes, smoke from the sage, how nice. What great ideas, all of these. Do me a favor too, I'm wondering if you could put your grade level too, because you know, we could absolutely use this idea all the way up K, what, K6, well, further K12. There's all different ways to scaffold it because all of you are so creative. But I was thinking just so many ways for the kinder. <laughs> Terrific. And then absolutely, when we get back, absolutely like to hear how you're going to be using the idea. And then you'll be talking about it in the chat room too. Super, great, great representation. I'm so glad that you're all here. We got Kinder 912, we got special ed. Terrific, so good. Really nice. If you want to mention about how you, what ideas are coming to you for your, for your drawing, oh my gosh, thank you for sharing all these things. Origami with random acts of kindness yesterday. So nice. Oh, make a chain. Oh, what great answers. Oh my goodness. No, I never knew that. The quick draw. All these great ideas. Thank you.
I'd love to hear if you're thinking about other materials. I wonder. Hmm. Oh, thank you. Oh my goodness. Clay, or like even a 3D um, diorama or something. Oh my goodness. Right, collage mix. <laughs> oh, wow. Press flowers, maybe magazines. Yeah, so nice. What about text? I wonder about text. Hmm. Oh, nice. Recycled scraps of paper. Nice. Mm. Oh, wow. Stop motion. Charcoal. Oh, my goodness. Found object cloth from family, friends. Ooh, so terrific. Patchwork. Ooh, <laughs> I'm learning all kinds of things tonight. Love soup. Wonder what it is, or it could be anything, huh? Love soup. Ooh, narrative writing. Oh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Put images in alphabet soup. Wow. There's so many ways, so many ways to present this. Oh, nice. Could be an ad. Oh, comic book theme. Wow. Just so many, so many ways to do this. Boy, time flies. In about four minutes or so, I think Laura's going to give you some information. And at five, around 540, I think, uh, Susie's going to open up the breakout rooms. So we'll touch on that when that time comes. <laughs> That's so lovely. The Tibetan bowls, is that the one that they're metal? And I can't remember where there is a, an, uh, what's the word? Something that you would run around the rim to, uh, to make sounds. Is that what I'm thinking of, the Tibetan ro uh, bowls? Mm -hmm. 
Ah, the mallet. Oh my goodness, you have a class set? Oh, professionally tuned. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, we're lucky kids. So many ways to learn. These are such great answers. I love, I love all the ways that they could turn, you know, comic books, recycled, found items, like a patchwork quilt, the writing. Hmm. Could I ask you, is there anybody who wants to share how uh, you may have done kind of a similar project that if you've approached the subject and how have you approached it and how have you connected it with a writing project or an art project? When you talk about you know, what love is and how love is, is shown. Sometimes I think sometimes the kids, when they realize that, oh, you know, my mom and dad or my auntie or my brother, sister, that they did this for me. Wondering. Oh, how lovely. Oops. Teacher did a, a what's in your heart choice menu during the pandemic. It became a photo scavenger hunt. And definitely for the kinder kids, of the oral presentation would be just beautiful. Yes. So everybody, if you have uh, something to you'd like to share that you talked about in the breakout room, love to hear it. Uh, love to hear the different ideas that that came out. Oh, the slideshow's here. Oh my gosh. So I guess please raise your hand. I think Susie's going to call on you. Or if you're somebody who if this is your artwork and you want to talk about it, please, please tell us about your artwork if you'd like to or anything that you'd like to share from the breakout room. So nice. I really like the fox and the heart. They're really, really cute. The fox is beautiful. Whoever drew that, it's so, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. So nice. These are wonderful. Out of all the different ideas that come out. Oh my goodness. 
so nice. Did you share any thoughts about scaffolding uh, the ideas? Uh, and I, I saw lots of ideas in the, in the chat box too. But any other ideas? Too bad we don't have you know, cameras that could be loaned. Oh, so nice. Be really we nice to do a photograph. We needed a lot of scaffolding. For a, we realized we needed a lot of scaffolding for younger kids, kids is what we heard. I'm sorry, a lot of scaffolding for the younger kids? Any students under fourth grade, we realized we'd have to explain and go over love and talk about it and different, you know, to be I different think, than fourth grade. I think, level. sorry, I agree. And that's why I thought it was really nice with the comments in the chat at the very beginning, talking about what is love to you. Oh, so nice, so nice. But definitely, and that's that's the reason too that uh, we're talking so that we can help the kids talk and to kind of look at it more deeply than, you know, love is nice. So nice, so nice. What about for the, uh, for any of the older grades, upper grades? Any additional thoughts? Hmm. Nice, like abstract, but nice. I love the variety because that's what love is. Such a big variety of responses. Had anybody heard? I'm, I'm so sorry, Laura, are, are we just about finished with the slideshow before I go to a different topic? Yeah, we're just about done with the slideshow. Okay, let, let me know. Hmm. Yeah, this is the, this is the second to last or the last image. Okay, thank you. These are all so wonderful. Yeah, thank you all so much for <clears throat> participating and sending in your artworks. We love to see what you create. Um, Susie's going to share a survey in the chat now. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback on today's workshop. And if you're participating for salary point credit or professional development hours, um, please make sure you fill it out and fill in that portion at the bottom that requests your contact information. Um, that's how we keep track of everyone's participation. and. It helps us a lot if you fill that out at the end of every event. Um, Peggy, did you want to say any final words before we sign off for the evening? If we have a minute, I was going to ask, had anyone heard of Laura Aguilar or seen her artwork or you had studied her in a class? I'm curious. She struggles so much for recognition. Doesn't look like it. Yeah. Had never heard of her, but if you get a chance, take a look at some of her artwork. Just some really amazing things. She loved being in nature. And I read that she felt that way because she felt accepted in nature. That's why I love being with the, with the I love E for E, being with the teachers because uh, one of the teachers wrote that it's an opportunity to learn and grow. And it's wonderful, it always is. And from you, from all of you, thank you.